I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Veterans Day, which we are celebrating today, is a holiday to remember everyone who served in the military, period, whether or not they served in wartime. Veterans Day annually falls on November the 11th. This day is the anniversary of the signing of the armistice, which ended World War I hostilities between the Allied nations and Germany in 1918. Veterans are thanked for their patriotism, love of country, and willingness to serve and sacrifice for the good of the country. Veterans Day originated as Armistice Day on November the 11th, 1919, the anniversary of the end of World War I. Congress passed a resolution in 1926 for the annual observance, and November the 11th became a national holiday beginning in 1938. Veterans Day came around in 1954. President Dwight Eisenhower, who was a veteran himself, had served as the Supreme Allied Commander in World War II, officially changed the name from the holiday from Armistice Day to Veterans Day. So thank you to all of our veterans for being here today. Let's give them all a round of applause. Spangled Banner while a, a prisoner on a British battleship. He described America as the land of the free and the home of the brave. Those words are just as true now as they were then. Today, our nation celebrates a holiday called Veterans Day. To mark this important holiday, Argyle Student Council, as well as all middle school student and st students and staff, are pleased to honor the men and women of our armed forces with this musical salute. Each and every day, countless sacrifices are made by the brave men and women of our armed forces protect the many freedoms that each of us enjoy. Today, we salute you. We are honored to have veterans among us. Many of you in this audience may have friends or family that have served or are currently serving in the armed forces. To the veterans that are here with us today, and to the families of the veterans, we thank you, and we will not forget the sacrifices that you have made for each of us. Our speaker today is no stranger to the students at AISD. He is our chief police chief and is a decorated veteran himself. He is a prime example of service and per perseverance and leads by example each day. We would like to welcome Officer Paul Karen. Good morning. And then happy Veterans Day to everybody. And it is a pleasure uh, for me to be here with you and celebrate this wonderful day. Um, in fact, I talked to some of the, the veterans that are here. Um, Right before this whole thing started, I said, hey, have you been to one of these middle school events? Have you been to, to Argonne Middle School they've done, uh, when they've uh, done uh, Veterans Day? And they said, no, we haven't. I said, man, just wait. Just wait. These people know how to do it. So Mr. Gibson and company, thank you very much for everything you guys do to make every one of these veterans feel very special. I appreciate uh, the choir. I love the choir. I love what Mr. Griswold's done with them. I truly do. And the band. I don't know how many people went to the, the choir event a couple of weeks ago, but I told Mr. Griswold afterwards, because I was, I was impressed. And, and one of the ones that stood out with me was this, uh, the sixth grade boys, right? 
And I said, man, if you can do anything with sixth grade boys, that's a miracle. If you can do that, incredible. So Mr. Gridwell, thank you for er everything you've done with that, with that plan. Before I continue, let's do this one more time for the veterans that are capable of standing. Please do. And your family members as well. Please stand, turn around, and let everybody see you. Thank you very much. I always like to include family members with that because as anybody who's worn the uniform knows and will attest, those that we leave behind when we're off doing what we need to do carry a tremendous burden as well. Whether it's our spouses or children or whatever, they bear an incredible burden when we're off fighting for our country and I never, never want to forget the sacrifices that they make as well. They're very worthy of, of your applause and your thanks as well. So let's talk Veterans Day for a second. You know, I got handed this when I walked in. It's got my bio on there, it's got my picture. I looked at that when they handed it to me and all I could think of, man, I've gotten old. <laughs> Who is this young punk right there, right? You know, young and lieutenant colonel are words that generally don't go well together, okay? But in this case, I look back, I'm thinking, man, who is that young guy? And, uh, and, and I can't help but think over the years, I mean, there's so many memories that go through your mind on a day like this. So many, it's hard to really wrap up in just a few words what Veterans Day means. I think you've already done it well. Service and perseverance. Service and perseverance. You can ask any one of these people right here, why did you sign up? Why did you sign up to be part of the military? Some of them were, uh, were drafted when we had a draft. The others volunteered and stepped forward for whatever reason. Sometimes it was uh, educational benefits or whatever. So uh, wonderful reasons that they signed up. But every one of them also has a reason that, that they signed up. And it's because why? They love this country. Every one of them has a reason to think this country is worth fighting for. Am I right? Yes. Absolutely. And that, you know what? And they still love this country to this day. And that was one of the things that drove every one of them. And that drove me to sign up when I was 17 years old. I thought, you know, what am I going to do with my life? I love this country. It's a great place for all those naysayers out there that say, no, the United States is nothing special. No, this is a special country and it is well worth defending. It is still worth defending to this day. These people know that. And again, thank you so much for your sacrifice. You know, one of the other reasons I had for wanting to sign up as well was for me, it was a, it was a family thing. So many members of my family had served in the military. My dad did 27 years, retired as a, as a colonel in the Air Force. His father served in World War II, uh, was a young enlisted man, was over in, in the Pacific Theater in the Army Air Forces. Uh, and he had great pride in his services. As much as I could talk to my grandfather, he just died a few years ago at the age of 96. As much as I could talk to him, just feeling that sense of patriotism that he had in, his, in being part of the greatest generation, as they call him, uh, he definitely embodied that for me. You know, it's something I didn't know until even recently, but my, my great-grandfather, so my grandfather's father, didn't serve in World War I. He was of that age, but he didn't serve. He was a coal miner. So he was part of the war essential industries, as they called it, so they weren't allowed to serve in the military. But my grandfather's uncle served in World War I. And so we go a long way back. A little bit of trivia on that, though, is we didn't fight for America in World War I. And you're like, oh, oh no. <laughs> we hadn't immigrated yet. We were Scots. My family came from Scotland. So they were with the Gordon Highlanders back there and, and back in the day and fought for the UK. But I still have great pride in their service to their country and their flag. Service, putting things aside and serving something greater than you. That's what every one of these people right there had signed on to do. And whether they served two years or 20 or 30, it didn't matter. Every one of these people signed on to serve because they think that and know that this is an incredible country. But then what happens? What happens after basic training? What happens when we no longer have the parades and the brass bands and the flag waving and the ceremonies? That's when the perseverance comes in. And so that's why I'm glad you're thinking about that. Perseverance. What then keeps us going? What keeps us going when things get tough? And I can ask any one of these people here, and I know in their top three, one of the answers would be this. 
the person standing right next to you. Am I right? That person, that teammate, that person that is right there suffering the same things that you're suffering, going through the same hardships that you're going through, committed to the same things, you are teammates. And those people that you would give your, literally you would give your life for. When I was in Baghdad, I remember that so well. Bombs going off all across, all around us. You people that have served in combat, you know what I'm talking about. Bombs are exploding all over. And the one thing, you can't be thinking about patriotic music at this time. You can't think about flag waving and bands and all that. No, the one thing you want to do is not let that person down that's standing right there next to you. That's what kept us going. How many people have been to Europe? Okay, how many people have actually gone to Normandy? Okay, we've got a few. Let me tell you something, folks. If there's some that needs to be on your bucket list, that's one of them. Okay, D-Day. You're down there and you're, on the, uh, you're at the English Channel. You're looking up the hill at uh, Omaha Beach. And think about this. Think about those young men that were there. They've just crossed the English Channel. They're probably seasick. They're scared to death. Oh, yes, we were scared. Veterans, am I right? We were scared. Oh yeah, we were. <laughs> but you kept going. You gotta get up that hill and you're getting shot at. You've got 80 pounds of combat gear on your back and you gotta make it up that hill. That is your objective. What keeps you going? It's the person right next to you. Is that person that's part of your team that keeps you going. That's one of the special things about the military, I think, is those relationships that we've built. The ones that we will always treasure because we've suffered with them, we've been next to them when things were bad. That's perseverance. I'm so glad that you were studying that here in that school because it's one thing to start the race, folks. It's another thing to see it to completion. Perseverance is key. And that is one of the things that we think about when we think about our services. What kept us going? It was our people that were standing right there next to us, suffering as we did and going through what we did. Service. Perseverance, two wonderful things to study and things to reflect on on a day like today. Now, I started off today by looking at this picture and saying how much I've gotten older. All of us look in the mirror in the morning, <laughs> a few extra gray hairs, they're there. My back hurts, my knees don't work as they once did. I'm not the 17 year old that showed up at the Air Force Academy prep school, ready to go anymore, I'm, I've gotten older. Our day has come and gone. We can't any longer serve the way we once did. So on a day like Veterans Day, I like to, yes, reflect on what we've done, but more importantly, ask you now to think about taking up the flag where we've set it down, to start taking up that burden that we set aside. We can't serve anymore, our day has come and gone. But I ask everybody here, as you're looking at your life, you've got your whole life ahead of you, and you're planning out your future, please consider taking up where these wonderful people have left off. And consider serving as well. Is danger involved? Possibly. Sacrifice? No doubt. But this is a country that is worth sacrificing for and worth serving. And that's what we ask you to do. Ronald Reagan said not too long ago, well, not in our lifetime anyway, it seems like not too long ago, Freedom is only one generation away from extinction. If you value what these people have done, if you value this country and the wonderful things of it, then that's what I ask you to do, is just consider being the people that will now take up where they've left off. And we will thank you for it. And we, and we honor you for that, for considering doing that. So one more time, people, please give a round of applause to these wonderful people. Spend some time with them, listen to their stories, their wonderful stories. They get better with age, don't they? Oh yeah, they do. Listen to their stories and appreciate them for what they've done. And once again, uh, Mr. Gibson and company, thank you for having us here and thank you for the wonderful music, band, choir. Uh, we appreciate everything that you do for us. Thank you so much. Thank you, have a wonderful day.